Today I'm riding the Specialized Turbo Levo, a 29er e-bike with 150mm of travel. Compared to the Levo SL which I tested a few months back, this bike has a larger motor and battery which gives it more power and range. The geometry numbers of the two bikes are very similar, sharing the same 66 degree head angle and 480mm of reach on the size extra large. The Turbo Levo has longer chainstays and a longer wheelbase, which I think is from packaging the larger motor. Spec highlights on the bike include suspension from RockShox, SRAM brakes and specialized contact points, all of which I got them with just great. I'll also be testing a specialized Kinevo, which is a different beast entirely, so stay tuned for that. We loan these bikes from TBSM in Mottdale. If you're in the area and you want to check out the Levo range, then it would be worth dropping in for a chat. I'll put a link to the store in the description. So let's charge up the batteries and head to the trails. Specialized advertise these bikes with the slogan, the power to ride more trails. So I'm interested to see how true that claim is and how the ride compares from an enjoyment and a fitness perspective. I'm testing these bikes at Loftus, which is a short ride from my house. My usual route takes me about 10 minutes to hit dirt and I found the Levo only shaved about two minutes off that. The bike powers up the hills, but you quickly hit the 25 km speed limit on the flats. And unlike the Levo SL, the motor on the Turbo Levo doesn't fully disengage making pedalling above the limit more of a chore. Today I'm taking a more direct but more hilly route to see if that works a bit better. Alright, we'll put that six minutes to dirt, which is a good time saving. Alright, let's go down. Try not to die. I'm using the first of three power modes here, which I found to be the best for trail riding when I tested the Evo SL. Oh, front end's a bit vague. Get the drop for now. Just cause I don't know what the suspension's gonna do. Just with these standard settings, they feel on the soft side to me, front and rear, so let's just be careful with it. Oh, beautiful. Nearly took my foot off. I've been riding my regular bike with clips and the e-bikes with flats, so I had a little bit of trouble adjusting. My last ride was on clips. Get you around this way. Oh, see, I just struck pedal then, so I think it's definitely too soft in the rear at the moment. Which is actually the same thing I found on Specialized settings for the Enduro too. Oh. oh, bottom of the fork badly. Oh, thank you whoever put those logs back. That's the fun bit. 
big advantage of electric bikes is the ability to power up tough climbs with little effort. You get to the top faster and you don't need to rest once you're there. I like climbing and I like the satisfaction of getting to the top of a big climb, but these bikes open up a lot of opportunities if you're short on time or if fitness is a limiting factor. And yes, I did feel pretty Wait, smug riding past these kids. All right, trail e-bike on trail trails. Let's give that a go. Oh, I don't have much trust in the front end. The turbo levo is quite manageable on these tight, flat trails, and I found the seated position to be comfortable when we were sitting down to spin. I'm in power mode 2 here for more, more boost on the flatter trails. The power delivery is fairly seamless, but I noticed both this and the Kinevo have some lag between when you stop pedaling and when the motor cuts out, which can be off-putting as the bike drives on for longer than you were expecting it to. Oh, <laughs> nearly dropped it. It's okay on this stuff. I'd probably rather the optic to pedal around. But it's not terrible. I mean, the SL's probably the perfect trail e-bike. Alone. I've got the flats on, so that's all right. So there's half the lunch break gone, and we've done 8.4 k's. Which is pretty good. Might do that in total, or a fraction more on the non-e-bike, the acoustic bike, as they're calling them. On chunkier terrain, the Turbo Levo offers few surprises. The steering is responsive, as you would expect from a 66 degree head angle. The 29er wheels truck over rocks, and the weight and wheelbase provide good stability. That weight is most noticeable when you need to hop up and over things. Wow, I had to pull for that. But I found the Turbo Levo to be much easier to muscle about than the Kinevo. Technical climbing is one area where I struggled with this bike. The seat angle is two and a half degrees slacker than the Kinevo, which put me further off the back in steep sections. And that combined with the strange overdrive from the motor meant that I had trouble going exactly where I wanted to. It didn't prevent me from getting up anything, but it was interesting that the Kinevo handled tech climbs at least as well as the Levo, even though it has more travel and weight. The Turbo Levo's real strength is its versatility. It will tool around fine on flatter trails, it's got the range and the power to take on big days in the mountains, and if you want to point it down rounded descents, it'll be up for that too. Some credit here goes to the FSR suspension platform, which does a great job of balancing grip, pedaling efficiency, and control in big hits. 
And that sums up who I think this bike is for. The Turbo Levo is not as lively on the trail as the Levo SL, and it doesn't bomb the descents like the Kinevo. But it's a better choice than both of them if you want range and power in a versatile package. Last descent of the ride. And it's a gnarly one. Let's go. Ooh, not that fast. Oh, I just don't know about that with this fork. <sighs> Getting a lot of dive. How does specialised claim of the power to ride more trails really stack up? Well, my typical lunch ride is around 11 kilometres on the regular bike, while on the e-bike I got in around 16, nearly 50% more distance. I also found that I chose a different route on the e-bike, opting for steeper fire road climbs over the single track, which opened up some different descending trails. So you do get more trails in the same amount of time, but what about effort? Those 16 kilometres on the e-bike burned about 30% less calories than 11 on the regular bike and my average heart rate was about 15% lower on the e-bike. This could be good or bad depending on your perspective. If you're riding for fitness, the e-bike is less effective at burning calories. On the other hand, I felt much fresher after riding the e-bike, so I could ride further and recover faster. So that's a wrap from my test of the Specialized Turbo Lever, a bike that really does what the marketing says. If you like this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss the next one.